Arcane, the hit animation series by Riot Games, has taken the world by storm. The collaboration between Riot, Fortiche, and Netflix has everybody raving about the animation, the story, and its characters. But what about the world? Today, we're going to take a look at the cities of Zon and Piltover, the architecture, the art styles, their respective influences, and how that tells its own little story. Because between some hard times and a tale of two cities, I love myself a good Dickens. The story of Zon and Piltover is a story of contrasts. The rich versus the poor, the rigid versus the fluid, the light versus the dark. And to do that, the designers of Arcane chose two different art styles to represent their cities. Art Deco for the city of Piltover and Art Nouveau for the city of Zon. Art Deco is a style from the 20s, one you've certainly seen from this poster of The Great Gatsby. Or if you live in any major city in the world, you're bound to have walked past an Art Deco building. That's, that the, that's the Empire State Building. That's, that's Art Deco. Now, Art Nouveau came a little earlier, sometime in the early 1890s. Again, super popular. Some notable works include the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona or any painting by Gustav Klimt or Alphonse Mucha. The choice of these two art styles or art movements are very clever, I think, because while they do have their obvious differences, there are similarities between the two. We'll get to that in a second, but first, just at a glance, the visual differences between the two art styles are apparent. And there are a couple of benefits to that. On a practical side, it makes for an instant read. Uh, it's immediately clear where we're at. So that means they're able to jump back and forth between the two places seamlessly without the audience being confused as to whether they're in Piltover or Zon. The second, of course, is thematically, the way it reinforces the story. Now, Art Deco is very geometric. Straight, rigid lines, sharp angles, streamlined, clean, but still decorative. There's a lot of gold, silver, and ivory, and like The Great Gatsby, it just feels rich. The strong, rigid, but luxurious style is a reflection of the society of Piltover, with their councils and academies, and dogmatic, but comfortable lifestyle. Contrast that with Art Nouveau, which is very soft and fluid. Its long swooping curves and a focus on the organic forms gives a very humanist touch. It's delicate, vibrant, and playful. Inspired by Japanese woodblock print, medieval folklore, and the pre-Raphaelites, it's honestly a little bit of a hodgepodge. And much like the city of Zon, in which its society is a little bit more, shall we say, flexible, its focus on materials like glass and ceramics also gives it a more fragile impression as opposed to the strong steel and brass structures of Art Deco. What's really cool is that people think that Zon and Piltover are polar opposites of each other, when in fact, they're not. Really, they're two sides of the same coin. If Zon is so diametrically opposed to Piltover, why not use brutalism instead? Why not choose an art style that does away with decoration and luxury, all the things that Piltover value so much? That's Noxus, we'll talk about Noxus next time. Why choose Art Nouveau? Because ultimately, they both want the same thing, peace and prosperity for their city, two sides of the same coin. And those parallels are really clear when you look at the philosophies behind Art Deco and Art Nouveau. See, they're both movements born out of industry and innovation. Both of them the results of post-war optimism. Art Nouveau fresh off the back of the Napoleonic Wars and Art Deco after the First World War. It was peacetime and people were ready to spend that sh money. That's why there aren't too many Art Nouveau or Art Deco art pieces per se. Uh, they were too busy making things that people could buy. Prints, book covers, ads, furniture, household decorations, jewelry. They were champions of industry and capitalism. They were also results of technological innovations, which allowed them to do things they never could. In the 1890s, the development of new printing technology allowed artists to mass print multicolored posters. 
all of a sudden, you didn't have to be rich to own a Lautrec or a Mucha. You could just buy a poster. They were challenging the values of French neoclassicism, the art style that came before. With Art Nouveau, these new technologies were a way for them to disrupt the status quo. Art Deco, on the other hand, was not so accessible. Nothing Art Deco was cheap. Furniture was made with gold, silver, and ivory. And boy, those things don't come cheap. The 20s and 30s had their fair share of technological innovations too. But with Art Deco, they focused more on science and progress. That, that was like their thing. It was about making the fastest cars and building the tallest buildings. It was more about shaping these new materials to fit their will. And with new steel forging and construction techniques, they could build taller, bigger, better. Skyscrapers, a monument to man's conquering spirit. Considering how influential both these styles are, they weren't around for that long. You'd think that they would have had long and storied tenures, but it's quite the opposite. They were flashes in the pan. Art Nouveau effectively was only around for about 15 years. Art Deco, the same, about 20 to 30 years. Compare that to the Renaissance, which lasted for 300 years. It's the same story with both Art Nouveau and Art Deco. They existed in a very small window of peace and optimism. And in that brief period of respite, things were looking up. Art and technology flourished only to be cut short by all-out war. The production design of Arcane is a triumph and a testament to what can be done when artists are given the bandwidth to be artists. The thing about working on a large-scale project like this, whether it's animation, live action, or video games, is this. Everyone working on it is an artist, and everyone wants to make it good. From character designers, to animators, to writers, to layout artists, to storyboarders, to riggers, to technical artists, and yes, the programmers. Everyone has a little bit of creativity inside them. How you get something as rich and nuanced as Arcane is when every single person working on the project buys into the vision and is allowed to add a little bit of themselves into it. A little bit of love. A little throwaway line from a writer, a little flourish from an animator, a little extra color here, and a little extra detail there. You put all that together and you get something as good as Arcane. Also, time more time, producers, please. I need more time. 